In this session, we would be discussing the concept of temperature inversion. We have already talked about the concept of lapse rate and insulation under temperature in the previous session. Now consider an example of a hot water boiling in a pan on the stove. What happens is the lowermost portion would be the portion would be which would be maximum hot or I could say warmest and as I move towards the upper side you would have relatively relatively cooler uh, water that would be present here. Similarly happens with the earth you have the ground or the land which is the source of heat and the air parcel which is closest to this source of heat would be warm. However, as I move up, it would become cooler. That is a normal process by which temperature change takes place or the temperature gradient occurs. However, in certain cases, this gradient is reversed and that is known as temperature inversion. So, in this diagram, you can see you have the cold air mass that overlays the hot air mass. However, in this slide you would see you have the lowermost region which is cooler as compared to the warm air which lies above it. Now wh uh, what are the basic causes of temperature inversion? There can be numerous causes which can lead to temperature inversion. The first is since you have the ground that is cooling at a much faster pace during the night time what happens is the ground surface becomes cool or the surface becomes cool. As a result, the air near the surface would cool out. So that is one type of uh, inversion that we are talking about. So similarly, we have other factors that affect inversion. However, when we talk about inversion, it's important to understand that inversion acts as a cap on the upper, upward movement of the air. So you have a kind of layer that is created and that prevents further upward movement of the air. So uh, in simple terms, if I talk about a city area, what would happen? You have a lot of traffic and vehicles moving around. So all the pollution and the dust that is rising would get, get trapped into this region. As a result, this region would have higher amount of pollutants as compared to the remaining area. So that is one of the major drawbacks that temperature inversion face. Now since you have higher amount of pollutants in this region, what would happen? You would have if the if this region is cooler as compared to the upper region, there would be more moisture. This moisture might lead to conditions of fog and this fog when combines with smoke or dust particles would lead to smog formation. Once you have a smog that is present in the air, it would decrease the visibility. So another implication would be decrease of visibility in this region. So these are the two basic drawbacks I can say that temperature inversion leads to. However, there are certain characteristics which must be fulfilled in order for temperature inversion to take place. So three basic characteristics are there. First is you should have clear skies. It shouldn't be cloudy since cloud would obstruct the heat that is passing down. You have clear skies, you have calm and stable weather or calm and stable air condition. That's another requirement. And finally, you have longer nights. So these three uh, uh, characteristics when fulfilled would lead to temperature inversion. Once there is a temperature inversion, it might lead to economic implications in form of higher pollutants, reduced visibility, increase in the fog level and increase in the smog level. And based on this, there was one of the questions that was asked in UPSC 2013, which talked about the implications of temperature inversion and the main focus was the implications on economic, uh, the economic implications we could say. So here we understand how uh, economic implications takes place. Then there is another important implication. Uh, when we'll be discussing uh, temperature inversion further, we'll talk about the mountain breeze and the valley breeze. So what happens is uh, when there is an inversion in the 
valley area the valley region would have a temperature below the freezing point as compared to the slopes or the mountain top resulting which if you have the vegetation that's growing in the valley region it would be hit by frost or i could say it would be frost bitten so it's best to have vegetation on the slopes rather than the valley bottom so that's another important uh, aspect that we need to touch when we are talking about the economic implications also a situation of temperature inversion would lead to calm uh, since it is prevalent during the calm weather and stable weather it would lead to less of rainfall as compared to uh, a weather without temperature inversion now let's move on to the types of inversion when i speak about types of inversion we can broadly classify inversion into three types the one that is the ground inversion or the inversion at the surface the next is the upper air inversion and finally the frontal inversion ground inversion or surface inversion can be further subdivided into radiation inversion and advection inversion upper air inversions will involve subsidence turbulence you have convective inversion and again you have trade wind inversion that's less commonly heard of so you have trade wind inversions and finally you have the frontal inversion so let's discuss these inversions one by one so radiation inversion most commonly uh, studied or referred uh, inversion example is during the night time you have ground surface or the ground that cools rapidly due to radiation and because of the rapid cooling of the ground what would happen is the air parcel that is closest to the ground would become cooler as compared to <clears throat> the layers above it this usually happens at a height of around 90 meters so that is the most common inversion usually seen in the night time commonly seen when there is little wind movement as i said we need to have stable weather conditions so it ultimately means there is little movement of wind or less wind movement in that region you will see radiation inversion so the ground cools very rapidly as a result you would have cooler airs uh, uh, cooler air towards the ground surface uh, in this you probably will see there is no cloud formation that is uh, apparent you cannot see any cloud formation and if there is no cloud formation what would happen that would further enhance this process of cooling because the clouds are not acting as an obstruction so if there are no clouds again there would be rapid cooling of the land surface and this is a kind of vicious circle that goes on however in the regions of arctic you do not see any inversion due to radiation because you have the surface that is cool throughout the year the next is advection advection is commonly seen in the coastal areas so you have the sea and the land and you have cool winds that blow from sea to the land that push the warm land uh, the warm wind from the land and that process is known as advection now advection is commonly seen in the co uh, cold months coastal areas commonly seen in the months which are cold in the regions which are close to the coast so you have the coastal areas and the uh, the cold months which commonly have the advection inversion again under advection inversion you have thick layer of warm air that overlies the cold air and you have since the cold air is moving here you will have cool air towards the lower side and you would have the upper warm layer Uh, there is another example of the valley and the mountain uh, breeze that we talked about that we can und again understand under radiation so you have the valley bottom as we said during inversion what would happen the valley bottom would be would reach at a temperature below freezing point so you would have uh, either, either negative temperatures or you would have temperature near 0 degrees as a result if there is vegetation in the valley region it would be frost hut as compared to the slopes because of this there are numerous examples like the orange fields in california then you have the vineyards of france which are grown on the gentle slopes of the hill rather than the valley itself however they can be well grown in the valley but just because of the inversion 
that can uh, occur in that region and destroy the crops there you have these cropping patterns usually seen al along the gentle slopes the next is subsidence now subsidence of the air is sinking of the warm air now this sinking of the air usually occurs due to high pressure so you have high pressure that is created at a height and that leads to sinking of the air this sinking of the air would lead to cold air that comes down in contrast to the warm air and this leads to subsidence now subsidence inversion is commonly seen in around 30 degrees uh, north you have the azore highs and the pacific highs so you have the azore high and the pacific high region at around 30 degrees north that would see the subsidence and once you see the subsidence in this region you can also say that this subsidence phenomena is again common during night time so as you can see most of the inversion patterns occur during night time the next is straight wind inversion straight wind inversions occur mainly due to the inversions uh, that occur in the trade wind region so it's the difference between the lowest and the uppermost uh, i could say the top and the bottom of the uh, region and once you have this difference this difference should not be more than few degrees celsius once you have this condition that is satisfied you would have trade wind inversions usually seen in the region where you have anti cyclone formation or anti cyclonic formations that you can see here so that is common phenomena of trade wind inversion now interesting phenomena about trade wind inversion is you have a region of inversion now let's understand you have the belt of inversion what would happen in the region above and below the inversion zone so in the region which is above the inversion zone you would have a steep lapse rate so you would have a, a kind of a steep gradient in the lapse rate and also this region would have dry air however this is the region which is above the lapse rate How, uh, sorry above the region of temperature inversion however where you have the region below the temperature inversion this region would be witnessed by lots and lots of clouds you would see high amount of moisture that is present in this region and finally this region would have vertical temperature gradient which is very steep so vertical temperature gradient and that is steep so these are the major characteristics that you see under the trade wind inversions it controls the vertical uh, circulation and since it controls the vertical circulation it again restricts the vertical movement of the clouds and it acts as a lid on the top of a box so it acts as a lid or a barrier which governs the amount of intake that can go into the box so that is what is trade wind inversion then next is turbulence and convective inversion turbulence and convective inversion is caused due to a mechanical process rather than the other ones this is mainly attributed to the mechanical process the main idea behind the turbulence process is you have the frictions uh, friction that leads to eddies in the lower layer and this eddies or eddies formation that occurs in the lower layer would slowly and gradually bring back upper air to the lower layer so you have a kind of eddy current that is flowing and it would bring the air from the upper layer to the lower layer and that is the main idea behind turbulence or convective currents convective as the name suggests you have mixing of air that takes place and this mixing is responsible for a uh, kind of inversion since you have mixing you have the exchange of air that is taking place so you have the movement within the warm air and the cold air that takes place and once the mixing is completed what would happen is the air would reach a maximum height and it would become cold and once it become cold it would try to displace the warm air so you have a kind of process that goes on mainly due to the eddy currents that are present in the atmosphere and then uh, usually these kind of uh, inversion patterns occur at higher altitudes as compared to the radiation and the frontal inversions which are usually at a lower level now moving on to the last type of inversion that is the frontal inversion and the most interesting inversion i could say 
this is a bit different from the remaining two categories that's the upper air inversion and the ground inversion the main idea behind this is the implication of the Coriolis force we will cover Coriolis force in more detail when we would be talking about the wind patterns in jet streams now what happens due to the Coriolis force because of the Coriolis force the path of the air mass rather than being horizontal becomes sloping and that is one of the primary characteristic of frontal inversion you won't see a sloping air mass in any other temperature inversion in contrast to the frontal inversion then again there is very important thing that happens in frontal inversion is that the moisture that uh, that, that the moisture that is present in the atmosphere usually increases however in other cases in case of ground and upper air inversion what happens is as you move up temperature increases and humidity decreases however in case of frontal inversion you have rise in humidity or uh, I can say specific humidity would increase as you rise higher and that leads to uh, the warm air that ascends and finally uh, retreats the cold air so you have uh, this pattern that is seen in the frontal inversion it occurs at a point where you have the cold air, air front that pushes the warm air front up and that leads to frontal inversion frontal inversion is usually present up to 2 kilometers of height in the very lower atmospheric range and it's mostly present whenever you have fronts now as we said you have air quality and inversion that is very important because of the inversion you have a kind of cap that is formed at the uppermost layer and this cap would restrict all the pollution smoke and dust that is present in the atmosphere and would lead to rise in the uh, amount of pollutants in the lower atmosphere it would again lead to increase in the smog and that would in turn reduce the visibility or the range of vision uh, for most of the vehicles and mainly during night time then uh, it also decreases the level of warmth in the lower layers because the lower layers become cooler as compared to the uh, normal temperature pattern that could be seen in so this was about temperature inversion in the next class we would be focusing on the uh, tibetan plateau the latest developments in the tibetan plateau you can subscribe to our channel for more further updates on climatology we'll be more than happy to answer any and all doubts you have have a good day ahead